Okay, so if you are following my YouTube channel, I am doing a lecture series for differential calculus. And if you are a student of Batanga State University, this is the last part of our course syllabus for Math 401. And I'd like to say thank you for patiently watching my videos. And I'd like to say a big shout out to all my students from PET E1101, PET E1102, PET E1103, PET E1104, and from Mechanical Engineering Program, ME1104, ME1105, and ME1112. And I'd like to say thank you all for watching those who are following and watching my videos even if you are not my students thank you and uh, for this video i'll be discussing you with you how to execute the chain rule of partial differentiation okay say so if you recall that if z is a multi-valued function defined by z equals f of x y and x is a single valued function of in terms of t and y is also a single valued function in terms of t then the total derivative of z with respect to t is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to t. Now, what if this x and y are also multi-valued function? Okay. So, and therefore... If z is a multi-valued function defined by x equals f of x, y, and x is also a multi-valued function of the form x, s, and t, and y is also a multi-valued function in terms of s and t, then the partial derivative of z with respect to s is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to s, plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to s. And the partial derivative of z with respect to t equals the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to t plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to t. And then the number of uh, variables on your parametric equations as x and y determines the number of partial derivatives relative to the function z okay and here is the formal definition and that is what you call by the way that is what you call by uh, chain rule of partial differentiation and here is the formal definition of the chain rule of partial differentiation okay so suppose that u is a differentiable function of the n variables x sub 1 running until x sub n and each of these variables is in turn a function of m variables y sub 1 running until y sub m. And suppose that farther each of the partial derivatives, the partial derivative of x sub i with respect to the par with respect to x sub j, where i runs from 1 to n and j runs from 1 to m. And then u is a function of y sub 1 running until y sub n y sub m and the partial derivative of u with respect to y sub 1 is equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to x sub 1 times the partial derivative of x sub 1 with respect to y sub 1 plus the partial derivative of u with respect to x sub 2 times the partial derivative of x sub 2 with respect to y sub 1 running until the partial derivative of u with respect to x sub n times the partial derivative of x sub n with respect to y sub 1 and you repeat the process until you reach the last partial derivatives of the form partial derivative of u with respect to y sub m is equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to x sub 1 times the partial derivative of x sub 1 with respect to y sub m running until the partial derivative of u with respect to x sub n times the partial derivative of x sub n with respect to y sub n and we shall be applying this definition to find the partial derivative of u with respect to r and partial derivative of u with respect to t if u equals x squared plus yz and x equals r sine t and y equals r cosine t and z equals r sine squared t. And you know that u is a function of x and y. Uh, sorry, that's x, y, z. Okay. And then x is a function of r and t. Also, y is a function of r and t. So, a z, which is also a function of r and t. Okay. And then to look for du dr, 
we say that du dr is equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to r plus the partial derivative of u with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to r plus the partial derivative of u with respect to z times the partial derivative of z with respect to r. And then performing the operation, we shall have okay, partial derivative of u with respect to x. We differentiate this with respect to x, and that is 2x. And then partial derivative of u with respect to y. So we differentiate this with respect to y, and that is z. And then the partial derivative of u with respect to z is equal to y. And then similarly, for the partial derivative of x with respect to r, okay, so sine t is constant, and then you differentiate r, that's 1, so that's sine t. And then the partial derivative of y with respect to r, r is uh, cosine t is constant, then you differentiate r, so that's cosine t. And then the partial derivative of z with respect to r, okay, so that's sine squared t. And then the partial derivative of u with respect to r is equal to 2x times sine t plus z times cosine t plus y times sine squared t. And then the next thing you need to do is to replace x by r sine t and you replace z by r sine squared t and y by r cosine t. And we shall have this. <clears throat> and then what you need to do now is you multiply uh 2 times r sine t times sine t and then you also multiply r sine squared t cosine t so as with r cosine t sine squared t and you have this okay so you have 2r sine squared t this is your 2r sine t sine t and then this is uh r sine squared t cosine t and this is also equal to r cosine t sine squared t and that will give you 2r sine squared t cosine t and then you can factor out 2r sine squared t and then you shall have 1 on the first term plus cosine t on the second term. And then you shall have 2r sine squared t times 1 plus cosine of t. Okay. Okay, so for the partial derivative of u with respect to t, we say that partial derivative of u with respect to t is equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to t plus the partial derivative of u with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to t and uh, plus the partial derivative of u with respect to z times the partial derivative of z with respect to t. And then from our previous uh, uh, slide, we have partial derivative of u with respect to x equals 2x and partial derivative of u with respect to y is z and partial derivative of u with respect to z equals y. And then from x, y, and z, we will be looking for the partial derivative of x with respect to t, and r is constant, and then you differentiate sine t, and that will give you cosine of t. For partial derivative of u with respect, or partial derivative of y with respect to t, r is constant, then you differentiate cosine t, and that's negative sine t. So that's negative r sine t. And then for the partial derivative of z with respect to t, so you use the derivative for power of sine, so that's 2r sine t cosine t. And then for the partial derivative of u with respect to t is given by 2x times r cosine t plus z times negative r sine t plus y times 2r sine t cosine t. And then what we need to do is to replace x by r sine t, z by r sine squared t, and y by r cosine of t. And when we have this, then 2 times r sine t, r cosine t will give you 2r squared sine t cosine of t. And then r sine squared t times negative r sine t will give you negative r square sine cube t. And then plus r times 2r, that's 2r square. And then sine t then cosine t times cosine t will give you cosine squared t. And then we shall have, and then what you can do is to factor out what is common on three terms. I think that's r squared is common. So you got r squared. And uh, sine t is also common, r squared sine t. So when r squared sine t is factored out, the first term will become 2 uh, 2 cosine t, yeah, 
And then the second term will become negative sine squared t. And then the last term will become r squared that's been thrown outside and as well as sine t. So you'll have 2 cosine squared t. And then you shall have this. And this is the partial derivative of u with respect to t. And that is equal to r squared sine t times 2 cosine t minus sine squared t plus 2 cosine squared of t. So you will let u be equal to r squared plus s squared. And r is equal to x plus y. And s equals x minus y. And then we look for the partial derivative of u with respect to x and partial derivative of u with respect to y. So we shall have... Partial derivative of u with respect to x is partial derivative of u with respect to r times the partial derivative of r with respect to x plus the partial derivative of u with respect to s and times the partial derivative of s with respect to x. And then we differentiate it uh, individually. So we have partial derivative of u with respect to x, du dr. So we shall differentiate this with respect to r and that's 2r. And then times dr dx, then we shall differentiate this with respect to x, and that is 1 times 1. And then plus, we shall differentiate this again with respect to s, and that is 2s, times the partial derivative of s with respect to x, and that's another one. Okay, and then the next thing to do is to replace r by x plus y and s by x minus y. And we shall have this. 2 times r is replaced by x plus y, then times 1 plus 2, then s is replaced by x minus y. Then multiplying to each term inside the parentheses, so as on the second term, so we shall have 2x plus 2y plus 2x minus 2y, and then adding 2y and negative 2y, this will become 0, and then 2x plus 2x is 4x. That's the partial derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, so for the partial derivative of u with respect to y, we have... Partial derivative of u with respect to r times partial derivative of r with respect to y plus the partial derivative of u with respect to s times the partial derivative of s with respect to y. And then we have the partial derivative of u with respect to r. So you differentiate r squared plus s squared with respect to r and that will give you 2r times the partial derivative of r with respect to y. So you differentiate x plus y in terms of y and that will give you 1 plus the partial derivative of u with respect to s, you differentiate r squared plus s squared in terms of s, and that will give you 2s, times the partial derivative of s with respect to y, and that will give you negative 1. And then the next thing to do is you replace r and s by x plus y and x minus y respectively. So we shall have 2 times x plus y minus 2 times x minus y. And then you introduce 2 each term inside, negative 2 each term inside, and then you have this. 2x plus 2y minus 2x plus 2y, and then you add 2x and negative 2x, that will give you 0, 2y plus 2y, and that will give you 4y. And therefore, the partial derivative of u with respect to y is equal to 4y. Okay, so we have u equals arctangent y over x, and x equals r cosine theta, plus, and y is equal to r sine theta. We wish to find the partial derivative of u with respect to r and the partial derivative of u with respect to theta. Okay, so we have the partial derivative of u with respect to r and then we shall look for the partial derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, and that is, since this includes arctangent, you recall that the derivative of arctangent of u is equal to du all over 1 plus u squared. So... For the denominator, you write 1 plus, you take the square of this, that's y squared over x squared, and then you differentiate y over x with respect to x, and that will give you negative y over x squared. And then to simplify, what you need to do is you just multiply both the numerator and denominator by x squared, okay? So we shall have negative y all over x squared plus y squared, and then... That's the partial derivative of u with respect to x. And then for the partial derivative of u with respect to y, we shall have, okay, you do the same. You copy 1 plus y squared over x squared, and then you differentiate y over x with respect to y, and that is 1 over x. So this time, you multiply this by x squared, and then so as here. 
So you will have x over x squared plus y squared. Okay? And you shall have this. And then for the partial derivative of x with respect to r, with respect to r, cosine theta is constant. So you shall you shall have cosine theta. And then the partial derivative of y with respect to r, sine theta is constant, and you shall have sine theta. And then for the partial derivative of u with respect to r, so that's negative y over x squared plus y squared times cosine theta plus x over x squared plus y squared times sine theta. And then the next thing to do is you replace y by r sine theta and x by r cosine theta. And you recall from here that x over r equals cosine theta, so as y over r equals sine theta, and then representing this in a triangle. So if this is your theta, so the, oh, the adjacent side is x and the opposite side is y and then the hypotenuse is r. So we can recall that r square is equal to x squared plus y squared. So you can replace x squared plus y squared on the denominator by r squared. And then y is to be replaced by r sine theta. So we have this, okay? y is replaced by r sine theta and then x squared plus y squared becomes r squared then you just copy cosine theta on the second term x is replaced by r cosine theta and then x squared plus y squared is replaced by r squared and then you copy sine theta and then you shall have okay negative one over r that's negative r over r squared that's one over r then you copy sine theta cosine theta and then r over r squared is also another one over r then you multiply cosine theta and sine theta. And as you can notice, okay, and this will give you zero. Okay, that's the partial derivative of u with respect to r is equal to zero. For the partial derivative of u with respect to theta, okay, that's the partial derivative of u with respect to x times the partial derivative of x with respect to theta plus the partial derivative of u with respect to y times the partial derivative of y with respect to theta. And then you recall. That the partial derivative of u with respect to x is negative y all over x squared plus y squared from our previous solution, and that the partial derivative of u with respect to y is positive x over x squared plus y squared. And then we shall now differentiate x with respect to theta, so r will be treated constant. So the partial derivative of x with respect to theta is negative r sine theta, and the partial derivative of y with respect to theta is r cosine theta. And finally, for the partial derivative of u with respect to theta, you just copy this one, negative y all over x squared plus y squared, and then you multiply it to negative r sine theta, plus you copy this one, x over x squared plus y squared, and then you multiply it to r cosine theta. And then again, you recall that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, so this will become r squared. And then y is to be replaced by r sine theta, and x is to be replaced by r cosine theta. And then we shall have this. Negative r sine theta times negative r sine theta all over r squared plus r cosine theta. This is our x all over r squared times r cosine theta. And then multiplying, so that's negative r and negative r, that's positive r squared, okay? And then divided by the r squared, that will become 1. Then sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta. Doing the same here, r times r is r squared divided by the r squared, that will become 1. And then you multiply cosine theta and cosine theta, and that will give you cosine squared theta. And then from the square identity, so you have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And therefore, the partial derivative of u with respect to theta is equal to 1. And that's it.